Perspective here on France 24 are anthropologists who are challenging established critical thinking that violence, oppression and inequality are the natural order of things, a natural order dominated by men. They take on the well-established work of professors like Steven Pinker, Jared Diamond, Yuval Noah Harari and Jordan Peterson, saying it's clever but ultimately fantasy posing as science. The book, Why Men, is a riposte to that. They use parables of the toilet frog, the life of baboons, to stand up their theory. Let's bring in Nancy Lindisfarne and Jonathan Neal uh, and talk about their book. Am I right, both of you, to start by saying the whole trigger for this was a shared dislike for the book by the renowned German philosopher Friedrich Engels, The Origins of the Family, an awful book, you both say. <laughs> Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of the starts, certainly. Our entire relationship has actually been about talking about gender, gender politics and so forth, so it has a long history. And, and why yes. that book? Yeah. I think that book, because I was I was closest to it, it was kind of a progressive book that had a progressive idea. Um, and I, this is terribly embarrassing, I agreed completely with it, but I never actually read it. And then when I read it, when we started working on this topic together, seriously, to write a book, uh, uh, Nancy said, you, you better go and actually read that book. So I went and read that book, and it was full of racism and homophobia and an argument that humanity moves through stages as we got more and more developed until we finally got through savagery and barbarism and we finally arrived at white European civilization. Um, and, oh, dear. Oh, dear. I think it's also enormously important to remember that in second-wave feminism, for socialist feminists, this was the most important book. It was talking about private property. It was talking about the family. So those of us who are white-haired and this old um, remember that move. It was a very important and opening move for our feminists um, some time ago. But actually, I, I, yeah. I started, uh, I think we both started, really with much more anger at the people like Steven Pinker. Right, let me bring <laughs> that in, because I'm going to get you to set out what you're challenging and what you, you know, what your counter theory is in the book. But you mentioned Steven Pinker, Jared Diamond, authors of what you call big boy human history. What do you mean, big boy human history? Well, it's mainstream dominant history. It's the history that actually supports the kind of authority of people who are rich and powerful and who are very much in favor of, of the kind of inequality which we've seen growing over the last 30, 40 years. So it's, it's a history that supports a kind of tyranny, oppression, some places dictatorship. It's ugly. And it's the history written by the people who are in favour of big boys beating up all the rest of us in the playground. Which allows you to the then... Uh, no, I get it. That's really interesting. And which allows you to come in with what you say is a counter theory. There's much a level of equality that, as humans developed, was there from an early stage. It wasn't about aggression and male dominance. The, we've told the history in two acts, really. The first act is going back, looking at the very wonderful new material that's coming out from archaeologists, primatologists, and so forth. It's quite revolutionary. And what it actually tells us is that for the first, what, 200,000 years of human history, we were egalitarian. This is how we survived. We're quite puny primates. We're small. We're not really very good at dealing with lions unless we do it collectively. And that seems to be what we actually did. We learned to share. We learned to share food, meat, and obviously all kinds of vegetables and fruit. We learned to share childcare. So what we see is both men and women looking after children, taking care of each other, elders also being cared for. So a very different pattern from other primates. And we learn to share good sex. Um, and the kind of new anatomy that we understand means that men and women also experience sex, sexual joy, and so forth. So this is our long history. The second part of this, Act Two, is a much less pleasant kind of story. The, I forget one thing. Our sharing also meant we 
collectively did not like bullies. And we yeah. have a lot of contemporary history of that. Well, you refer to sort of the, the leaders of the new far right, the likes of um, Putin, Donald Trump, Jair Bolsonaro, Duterte in the, the Philippines, Narendra Modi in India. You call them uh, the owners and enforcers of inequality. Yes. Um, well, it's not only them, but they are the, the most serious people about inequality now. They are the most dedicated to inequality of racism, of sexism, Islamophobia, every kind of in inequality. Um, but there have been many, many, many unequal regimes um, since we discovered agriculture. Uh, once people had farming, it was possible to trap people. When Part of our inherited equality was that when people were farmers, hunters and gatherers, you could always just walk away if somebody was trying to take everything you had. Mm. You could walk away and go somewhere else. Farmers can't do that. Farmers oh. can be trapped. That's very interesting. I would, would like you to just explain to me two things, if you can combine them. First of all, I mentioned to an uh, audience you were going to bring in the parable of the toilet frog to explain some of your frustration, but also explain some of the societies where it is working. Uh, egalitarianism nowadays, you talk about China, uh, Amazonian Ecuador, uh, you talk about Vene Venezuela too. Uh, these are places in China and Ecuador. It's not the whole country. No, of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. But there, there, this is there's one anthropological account of people who live in the in the hills in the far south of China. Uh, there are people that I, I taught in a school in an indigenous community in southern Venezuela where men and women were equal and people were equal. Um, these are now people on the margins, I think is terribly important. And we understand from this archaeology and the early history of human human society is in fact these were the way these these are our clues to how other people lived a long, long time ago. Um, they've been pushed out by the agriculturalists, by the people who dominated the farmers, who've been the thugs and the people in power since well about 10,000 years ago, really. And archaeologists have a very clever way of working out the precise moment that this changed. As they dig down through the the, rec the archaeological record, for a very long time, people were living, Every it, there would be a village and everybody's house was the same size. It's and great. then suddenly, yeah. some people have much bigger houses than other people. <laughs> and we know they know that's the moment when inequality arrived in this place. But also in these histories, yeah. these archaeological histories, one also finds that after 100 years, 200 years, suddenly everybody lives in the houses the same size again. So what we okay. have to understand is that resistance is always there. Nancy, great to talk to you. Nancy Lindisfarne, Jonathan Neal, we've given you a taster of the book Why Man, which is out this week.